Target 12 that she is a medium and that John Arnold, <coughs> the long deceased 19th century owner, told her Dance Row was stealing. Now, this is so interesting, right? Because obviously she said there that Jacqueline Nunez has stated that she's a medium. Now, if we wind the clock back to yesterday's video where I spoke to Satori and Cody, Satori Hawes said to me that before owning this house, she'd never dwell, like, dwelled in the world of paranormal or, you know, anything to that effect. How has she suddenly become a psychic medium just overnight and she's able to talk to John Arnold and talk to the birds and the bees? <laughs> you know, like... It's a genuine question that I've got. How does she go from no background in the paranormal whatsoever to suddenly owning the Conjuring house and becoming a psychic medium? Like, that's one hell of a story arc, right? What up home slices, home fries, and homes of other varieties? Today's video we are going to be reacting to Simply Strange, but more so his question, his valid question. And guys, please watch his entire video for full context, plus at the end is hilarious and I highly recommend you watch it. But um, and so his question, he asks, how can Jacqueline claim to be a psychic medium or seemingly become one overnight when she has no paranormal background before owning the conjuring house so the answer is quite simple you don't have to have a paranormal background to have psychic medium abilities because all psychic medium abilities are or extrasensory perception abilities aka abilities and all those are are the skills to perceive energetic vibrations and frequencies as information using our natural five senses quick little disclaimer i am not condoning any of the behaviors or things that jacqueline nunez has done in the past regarding the conjuring house or ever in general but simply to provide an explanation to this question with that being said, not having a background in the paranormal when you have clear abilities is risky business. And if you combine that with the lack of discernment, oh boy, are you in for a real treat. As a medium, someone who communicates with other spirits or other beings, it is extremely important to have an understanding of the different types of spirits and entities that are in existence because not all of them are good and can affect the living in negative ways. So whether or not you believe in the paranormal, you know, I'm not here to convince you, but to provide a perspective based on someone who is a medium. And the thing is, even if you are educated in the paranormal and you have an understanding of the different types of entities and spirits and things of the such, the problem is this, spirits, and entities can lie. So understanding the behavior patterns and just like personality traits and the things that they do, understanding those types of patterns is very important when identifying other beings. Because like I said, you have some negative things that lie and they are fairly skilled at manipulating their energy so they don't give their malevolence away through their energy. So you can have negative beings pretend to be archangels and they can look identical to what a person would assume an angel would look like, even down to like the outwards energetic impressions that they give. But this is where discernment is very important. You can gain discernment through practice, having the necessary experience in dealing with negative entities, or sometimes, in some cases, you can just be born with it. In my case, it took a lot of practice, but it will help you see through the trickery of some of these negative entities. So the question is, do I think Jacqueline has any extrasensory perception abilities. And
And my answer is as follows. Yes, to some degree, but due to her lack of knowledge in the paranormal, lack of discernment, she is unable to adequately distinguish where she is getting her information from. But then if you combine that with her egotistical, narcissistic personality, you have someone who can't admit when they are wrong, which is also dangerous for someone who has mental health issues. And guys, I already made a formal video about this topic, going through what I believe is going on and like the full picture of what is going on with Jacqueline and the Conjuring House and how I feel like the majority of it has to do with mental illness with a smidge bit of paranormal things in the background. But yeah, please watch that video. Also will be down below for the full picture based off of what I believe is going on. But so, yes, you have someone that doesn't have the full understanding of the paranormal and the entities within that. You have somebody that has no discernment. You have somebody that has mental health issues and someone with a natural narcissistic egotistical personality. You put that all together and what do you get? You get the situation at the Conjuring House with Jacqueline Nunes. Um, so, yeah. But that's the problem. When you have someone with mental health issues, specifically a mental health illness that deals with narcissistic personality disorder, they already can't admit when they have a problem, nor can they admit when they are wrong. Especially if it affects their, um, the way they are being portrayed to the general public. But regardless, I do think she has some energy sensitivity, but all those other things are getting in the way of her being able to decipher what's really going on. And the only way to help her is if she's ready for the help and wants the help. If she doesn't want help, she's not gonna get it. And it's just gonna keep spiraling out of control until she hits rock bottom or until she has no choice. So today I'm noticing more and more people waking up. And when I mean waking up, I mean going through awakenings or like coming to the realization that they have some sort of energy sensitivity or just like having more of an understanding of what's really going on in the world and the universe. And I would say from about 2018, 2019-ish around COVID to now, we've gone through a major shift similarly to or even more than the one we went through from 1840 to 1920 basically when spiritualism was at its peak. As more technology is developed, it's only a matter of time before scientists make connections between all things paranormal, psychic abilities and like quantum physics, string theory, and um, subatomic particles, things like that. I think it's coming, it's just taking a bit of time but I do see the parallels. And again, we talk about this on Lights of Midnight and I also have a video somewhere talking about like the clair clairabilities and how they're possible using string theory and quantum physics and stuff like that. So highly recommend uh, looking into that. But anyway, as more people begin to recognize their energy sensitivities, the more they are going to be drawn to spirituality, which is fine. There's a lot of psychics and mediums who only learn about the spiritual end of things, which can be okay, but that's only one part of the puzzle, okay? So if you're somebody with energy sensitivities, I highly recommend, highly recommend you learn as much as possible. That includes spirits and entities, the paranormal, because they all kind of commingle with one another and go hand in hand. And the thing is, if you have people like that and they stay away from mediumship and they just kind of, I don't know, 
they do more physical practices or lifestyles and stick to the philosophical end of the spectrum. Again, it may be okay, but things can get dicey because if you're somebody with these extra senses or mediumship abilities, if you're not fully, fully experienced, you don't have control over the different energies that come into your life. Sure, you can put in, put up protections and wear your crystals and all that, but it only works to a point, I'm not saying that they don't work, of course, in my videos, I talk about the benefits and how you can protect yourself using those things. However, when you're in an environment where you don't control over the things that you come across, like the public, you can still have things try to bother you and attack you. That's just how it is sometimes. It sucks, but that's why it's important to do your research and work on your protections and stuff. But so, here's a great example. I can go to the store down the road at a normal grocery store, but if I'm walking next to, if I'm walking alongside Jane Doe and she's got an attachment that likes my energy more, I can be affected, okay? in some way, shape, or form. I am clairsentient. I can pick on the person's energy and display some of the symptoms they have for their own illnesses. I, I am not a master at control of blocking that out. I'm still learning. I'm not perfect. And so there are things that can still affect me and other people. And so, yeah, you can just go the spiritual route and just pretend everything's all fine and dandy and positive and as long as you stay in a positive vibration, you're fine. The whole toxic positivity thing, I call it toxic positivity because you have people that kind of say it's your fault for things that happen that are negative because you didn't do this or your vibration wasn't high enough. Well, unfortunately, that's that's not realistic, okay? So, yeah, we can be affected no matter what. And so understanding the different types of energies and entities that can affect us is very beneficial. So, and I feel like Jacqueline probably, and this is alleged because I'm guessing here, I feel like she was probably part of a community like that and that was involved in spirituality. She probably did some tarot card readings, um, kind of maybe even went with the lifestyle, did her meditations, and like learned about different philosophies, which is fine. But again, if you have no background in the paranormal, yeah, when bad things happen, you're not going to know what to do or catch the manipulation if you are caught in that. So yes, one thing Simply Strange touches upon in one of his questions is... How can she become a medium overnight? Like, what the heck? The thing is, not every person with energy sensitivities is a medium. So I just want to get that straight out there. But one thing that I've learned is those with energy sensitivities can become a medium over time, especially the more involved they get with specific types of energy, whether that's by practicing or being forced into it. So somebody like me who was forced into this lifestyle, um, it almost felt like it happened overnight. And it is possible. You don't necessarily have to be born and come out of the womb seeing dead people or communicating with other things. And I feel like the media has done a bad job stereotyping mediums and how their abilities work but not all mediums work the same way. Not all of their abilities work the same way. Sometimes you have abilities combining with other abilities, making something completely new that another medium with the same two abilities might not be able to do. So that is something to take into account. For Jacqueline, again, this is alleged, I think she had natural energy sensitivities like I did, 
But the difference is she put herself in the energy of the conjuring house over and over and over again by owning it. And for the spirits and entities that reside there, they saw her energy, her personality, her mental illness, etc. And saw her as a great candidate to manipulate and communicate with, thereby giving her exposure and practice. It's kind of like a muscle memory. You keep doing a certain skill and eventually it's like riding a bike. You don't even have to question it. You can just do it. But I feel as though she had a willingness to learn and she did, sort of. She was taught through manipulation before understanding the basics of energy and paranormal entities and spirits and discernment. So yeah, here we are. And then I'm going to use myself as an example because who better than somebody I know like the back of my hand than myself. But so for me, I was forced into it by being haunted against my will and being forced out of my body every single night onto the astral realm and being constantly attacked for a few years nonstop. I was forced to astral project every night, which is probably one of the reasons I'm pretty good at it right now. Then every night, I was tormented by paranormal activity that only I experienced, although I think my brother may have experienced, though I'm not sure if he'll ever admit it, but I digress. In addition to sleep paralysis, nightmares, and being pulled off my bed by my ankle, okay, and listen, I grew up having a very scientific-oriented mind. Originally, I went into college for biology. Of course, I switched to um, criminology and psychology and stuff like that, but I was very scientifically oriented in how I thought and just went about life in general. And I hate to admit this, but when I was a kid, I used to make fun of my brother for loving paranormal shows, for liking ghost adventures, and telling him that, oh, that's not real, because scientifically, there wasn't any proof. But it's like, I don't think science has caught up yet. And no matter how much I try to debunk it, debunk being pulled out of bed by my ankle, I could not. In that moment, my brain fucking broke. It went crack and I just had like a full-on panic of like what the fuck how did this happen? How is this even possible? And I feel like some of the major if you want to call them debunkers or people who talk about this and try to come up with explanations as to what the person experienced a lot of these people and I understand I don't hate these kinds of people I understand their thought process because that was me, but I feel like in order to change anyone's mind, they have to experience it themselves. And unless they have an experience that's traumatic, that they cannot explain, like being dragged out of bed by their ankle, they're never gonna, um, they're never gonna make that full switch. And I'm not trying again to convince people, I'm just saying like, for people with such an analytical mind, a scientific oriented mind, sometimes it just takes something crazy like that to happen for them to be like, oh shit, I guess this is legit. So I'm just saying I understand their perspectives and never ever will I hate on anybody's video debunking paranormal activity, period. Never ever will I ever. But so, I didn't want any of this to happen, period, okay? I didn't even think it was real. Being consistently attacked over and over and over again, I'm a fighter. I'm not someone who will just play victim all the time and be like, oh my god, my life sucks and I'm getting attacked over and over again. No, I researched the hell out of this stuff and I analyzed every single incident, whether it was on the astral realm whether it was in the waking world, experiencing my haunting, I analyzed every single thing that happened and I was able to figure out patterns and figure out what entity does what. And so part of how I am the way I am and what I know is due to that. 
and all the research I've done with other cases, helping people with their haunting cases, I have come up with like a bank of data that I was able to, you know, figure out that certain entities do certain things and I learned how to fight back because I was not, I was not going to be some freaking entities bitch, okay? So, I know, I'm a little vulgar today, I can't help it, okay? I can't help it. Full moon energy, I guess. But anyway, I mean, I hope this answers his questions. Maybe it uh, just raised a bunch of more questions, I don't know. But here's the thing, Simply Strange, if you have any questions for me and you want to have a conversation, I am more than happy to have a conversation. Like, I'm not the kind of person that will try to convince you to believe in whatever. Like, I like to provide what I know and leave it up to the person to decide for themselves. And that goes for anybody, whether you're a debunker creator and like to debunk things and you wanna have a conversation, dude, I'm way open for that. I can give you my perspective and then you can do whatever you want with that information but one thing I was thinking about too, it would be so cool, like, I would have no problem being a guinea pig for scientists to study, like, psychic abilities and stuff, as long as they don't use that stuff for bad things, like war or political information for other countries, you know where I'm going with that, um, because they've tried that. But if it's for the love of science and to further, I don't know, the studies of quantum physics or string theory or whatnot, I would love to be a guinea pig, dude. I wouldn't even mind. Like, you can sit me in some white room, give me a blindfold and a pencil and paper. I'll do whatever you want in terms of, like, um, psychic abilities and getting information and shit. Like, I would be happy because I'm confident enough in my own abilities to where that doesn't bother me. I'll prove some people wrong. I don't care. Like, I got nothing to hide. Some, some days it works better than others. Some days I get nothing. Some days I feel blocked off. But the best time, for me anyway, is when I'm blindfolded and have earplugs in and can't get any outside information on whatever the question is about or whatever you need me to find information for. Best scenario. But um, yeah, if anyone else has questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Again, I hope I answered his questions or questions that many others have been asking because it is a valid question because a lot of there's not a lot known in this field we have some psychic mediums who are nervous about being tested because they're afraid that you're gonna have these debunkers that are gonna be so set in their ways and fully convinced that it's not possible that they're so closed off that they'll find any excuse to write it off as something being debunked or explainable when it's not. And it is fully paranormal, and I understand that. Um, but at the same time, you have to be willing to look past your ego and, uh, yeah, see what's right in front of you. Oh, and don't ask me what some random word or s number in a secret envelope is because that's not how psychic abilities work. And if you want me to make a video as to why, please let me know down below because I would love to make that video. Also, lastly, at the end of Simply Strangers video, around 9 minutes, 47 seconds, where he makes that song, rap song, whatever you want to call it, of the situation at the conjuring house if you want me to make a cover of it this video has to get 10,000 views <laughs> and I will make it or 500 likes how's that how's that sound one or the other I will make a I will make a cover of that song 
So, guys, share this video, um, like this video, subscribe if you want, and uh, I will make the cover. Take a little listen to this absolute bop. It slaps. <laughs> Lyrics are here. But yeah, guys, I'm just going to end it here. And so thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see y'all soon. Peace out.